Thanks for joining me in conversations with leaders who are using the Enneagram as a leadership tool and a tool for personal growth and development. Joining me today is Maria Jahangiri, a community organizer focused on issues related to the climate crisis. She's an Enneagram Type 7 and shares how she uses the Enneagram as a tool for self-awareness. And now for the conversation. Today I'm speaking with Maria Jahangiri, Network Organizer for Climate Mobilization, an organization that provides policy toolkits and trainings to catalyze nationwide climate justice campaigns, fighting for zero greenhouse gas emissions by 2030 and for a livable future for everyone. She's also working with the Asian Pacific Environmental Network to build a presence in the Los Angeles area. This organization supports outreach to low-income Asian immigrant communities adversely impacted by fossil fuel operations. Maria, thank you so much for joining me today, and thank you for all the terrific work you're doing. Yeah, thank you for having me, Matt. <laughs> Great. Well, thank you. So um, let's start off and I'd just like to check in with you. How are you feeling now about climate change? Yeah, um, I think my feelings around climate change can be very much tied to like my my relationship to my feelings generally. Um, just like anyone else, I think like the world society doesn't create necessarily safe environment for emotions and feelings and um, everyone to di different degrees with their lived experience has relationship to like trauma and emotions. And so like for me personally, like growing up um, in a kind of uh, not so safe environment, I was kind of used to turning off my emotions generally. And so um, I kind of uh, pinned that as kind of an origin of um, being on the autism spectrum where my my relationship to my emotions is a little bit detached and mm. I'm not really sure exactly what my emotions are and I've honestly always used that to my advantage to be to lean into my like Enneagram 7 kind of vibe of like always being able to look on the positive side being very like scared of negative emotions and kind of that that kind of barrier to emotions has helped me like um, be detached in spaces, especially like organizing where there's a lot of like trauma informed work happening. Um, and so it's definitely helped in terms of like, not like kind of deescalating triggers and like, um, just like working in a space like climate organizing, which is so, I don't know, just heavy. And yeah, there, it's just really sad. Um, and so I feel like it's been really helpful like my kind of detached relationship to my emotions my ability to kind of put away negative emotions um but I'm definitely recently working to challenge that um because I'm realizing just like people say the Enneagram sevens like that your healing can only happen if you kind of work through what's actually real like in front of you and I definitely feel that way about like climate too like that um it's it's a very it's a very sad reality that we're living in, but um, it's it's worth processing and being aware of, and also being aware of how it affects everyone else's mental health too. Right. So, right. Yeah, I think yeah. My uh, as I'm kind of working through my own relationship to my emotions, I feel like my emotional relationship to climate organizing is also evolving, and and even though it's becoming challenging in some ways, there's a lot more awareness of just the sadness that exists right. there's also a level of healing that happens when you're more connected to your emotions and so being in spaces where people care about the same issues as me are very politically aligned are trying to create and even if it's not structurally possible in the way that we want and create like small openings of like community and social justice and care for each other it's definitely been also very healing to be part of those communities too right Wow, that so beautifully said. You know, it it has always occurred to me that, you know, having more Enneagram type sevens in the climate movement would be so helpful because you you bring an energy that just brings people together and networks and 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 that's exactly what you're doing. Um, but, you know, t type sevens also tend to shun negative emotions. 
And the climate movement is inherently fraught with a lot of ne processing negative emotions. And, and I think it pushes a lot of sevens away uh, in general, you know, unfortunately, because we need more of them. And yet, um, you know, your gift is that you, you know, have this ability to compartmentalize and still engage with everyone as that type seven and bringing that type seven energy without letting that those negative emotions, you know, turn you away from from what we need to do. So you are the perfect person for this. Thank you. <laughs> you have you have found your perfect role in the world. <laughs> yeah. So um, so tell me, you know, th those feelings that you're having now, um, you know, what what are they? How are they informing your behaviors and your direction as a leader? Yeah, well, kind of, I guess, following up to what you were saying, um, as in terms of like that type seven relationship, I think also not just like being kind of averse to processing negative emotions, but also being very problem solving um, in a very like, a uh, very quick way is definitely one skill that I think I have, which I bring to my leadership, um, always kind of seeing, and I think that's really helped me be a leader. Like for example, as a network organizer, like constantly like just being able to like problem solve and be very quick on my feet. Um, so I think that has helped, but I think it's also been, I think a pitfall also if that is like kind of expecting others to be on the same rate of like, putting aside their emotions to do work. Right. And I think in my earlier organizing as a leader, I don't think I was as effective because I wasn't able to see past that as much and kind of was expecting people to be on the same kind of like, da da da, like get it done, problem solve, like, like let's just move along constantly. And also not making as much space for emotions, honestly, in my organizing um, and not really understanding why other people wanted to. And that was kind of a few years ago since I've been organizing for like six years now. So now recently, I think the most kind of healing spaces that I've been in have been ones that uh, recognize the importance of like healing in organizing spaces. And so I'm definitely trying to bring more of that into my uh, like leadership and just like any spaces that I'm facilitating, like be more aware of the feelings that others are having, right. make space for that and connect those feelings to like why people are drawn to organizing. Cause I honestly think like the core of why people organize is like a desire to be in community and desire to heal. And so if you can tap into that, then I think you can be like- really Right. You can and, and all of that is really feeling based, right? So yeah. that is that is some great, advice and and it's just remarkable your journey of self-discovery and self-awareness brought you to that point of recognizing how important feelings play it's like the glue that brings us all together around a common cause and uh yeah that that's great that's great and and you found that as you engage with people's emotions they they do tend to be in, in, in engage with more enthusiasm is that what you're finding I think so I think there's like um there's a balance that I'm trying to kind of tread around like engaging people's emotions but then also like moving along processes okay. and just given that the like critical decade of organizing that we're in it's like very at the same time they're working on a slow timeline we're also working on a very intense timeline so I think that's the biggest thing around, like, if we do slow down, I think sometimes I find myself kind of questioning, like, the slowing down itself and, like, how much to slow down, right. especially in leadership, like, how much do you facilitate that? Yeah. Um, and especially with my own relationship with emotions and being a seven and trying to move past that, like, how much do I lean into each of those sides or how much do I, like, say no, like, let's let's put this processing aside and let's do some other work. Right, um, right. So I don't know. Yeah. I think it's just a balance that I'm trying to figure out. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Well, now what advice would you give 
to leaders and aspiring leaders who are starting to have their own feelings about climate? And you can, you know, from your perspective, from the perspective of a seven or just in general. Yeah, I would say like, I think the one thing I'm really noticing is that I actually meet a lot of people who have feelings about climate change. Like, like most people that I meet, like, especially my age, like it's very, like, I think it's like one of the most, I don't know, significant like things af affecting the whole like generation like Z. So it's like, it's kind of hard to be a young person and not have emotions around climate change, which makes sense. But I do think like most of those people aren't organizers or aren't like necessarily taking action on those feelings. So I definitely get confused between the gap between having such strong feelings around it, sadness around it, but then not being tapped into like community spaces that can like help with processing that and healing that and being with people who are very aligned um, instead of kind of like suppressing it or just like kind of being like apathetic because there's no way and like to solve climate change. And th that definitely makes sense to me. The apathy makes sense. I think it's like a defining characteristic of Gen Z, honestly, to be a little bit apathetic because it, because of just not believing that things are going to change, which is honestly super valid. But I do think that kind of stunts your emotional growth as a person. So even if you like, you don't think something is going to change, like kind of putting that aside and suppressing it or being like, yeah, I don't care. Or I don't want to be in community with people. It's not going to help you kind of heal or process or grow from those emotions. So I guess my advice would be, even if you don't believe in the power of like organizing or like structural wins around climate change like it's still making sure you set aside time for that processing to be in community with people who are aligned with you and to make those like small pockets of change that you can locally like I think it just brings a certain amount of joy and healing that I think is would be really good for most people yeah yeah oh that's so well said you know, it's um, it's ca carrying around, you know, the climate reality, you know, while you're, um, you know, living a lifestyle, you know, with people around you that don't seem to care. It kind of creates this cognitive dissonance mm -hmm. that starts to weigh on you. And I think you rightly point out that, you know, the best way to overcome that is start to move into communities um, that are aligned with your values and are starting to take actions um, so that you, you know, you it satisfies both of those outlets, right? You're not only are you n now aligned with people with your values, you're doing something about it. And, um, and it's very, like you said, very healing, very healing. Exactly. Yeah. Well, thank you so much. And I just so appreciate all the work you're doing and all your organizing and leadership and um, and your, you know, remarkable insights and self-awareness as a leader. It's just such a delight to talk to you. And I hope that we can continue the conversation in the future, you know, as as you progress and you learn more about what what's working well and what's not in your organizing efforts. So thanks again. Yeah, thank you so much. Thanks for watching. Wow, I really loved how Maria explained so well her ability to engage in the emotionally fraught climate movement. While type sevens tend to steer clear of emotionally challenging work, Maria has a gift that allows her to compartmentalize those emotions and bring her wonderful type 7 energy to developing active caring communities. She also strikes a balance of making space for emotions while still actively problem solving, getting to action, and getting stuff done. If you found this conversation helpful, please click on the thumbs up button and subscribe to the channel to get notifications of future episodes. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments section and I'll respond as soon as I can. Thanks again.